Would you believe if I told you that shiny jewelry you wear, the handlebar of your bicycle, the sparkling rim of the cars and even the glass visor worn by this astronaut Ed White during his spacewalk were all covered with metal by just dipping them into a solution and passing electric current through it? Sounds unbelievable, right? Yes, it sounds unbelievable. Let's find out how this fascinating process, which is called electroplating, actually works. Electroplating is the process of coating one metal object with a thin layer of another metal using electricity. It works through something called electrolysis. Basically, it's a process where an electric current drives a chemical reaction. But wait, why would we even want to do that? Why dip a metal object in a chemical and add another metal on top of it? Is it be because we have nothing else to do? No, there are two main reasons. First, to make the object look better. For example, jewelry can be plated with gold instead of making it with whole gold which is expensive. A piece of jewelry made of steel can be coated with gold or silver to make it look more attractive. And second, to protect the metal underneath. For instance, iron corrodes very easily. To prevent it from rusting or corroding, we can coat it with another metal like chromium, which hardly corrodes at all. Think about car parts. They are often coated with chromium or chrome to make them shiny and also to protect them. So how does this whole electroplating process work? Let's break it down step by step. To start with, we need few things. A power supply or a battery two metal strip called electrodes. This is usually the metal to be coated and the metal which we are going to coat. And a liquid called electrolyte which can conduct electricity. We dip the two electrodes into the electrolyte and connect them to the battery. Now suppose we want to coat an iron key with copper let's say. Here is what we do. We connect the iron key to the negative terminal of the battery and piece of copper metal to the positive terminal. The electrolyte we use in this case will be copper sulfate solution because it contains copper ions. When we switch the circuit on, that's where the real magic happens or rather chemistry happens. Copper sulfate solution has copper ions which are positively charged and sulfite ions which are negatively charged. These ions are free to move around in the solution. Once the switch is on, the positively charged copper ions in the solution are attracted to the negatively charged ion key because as we know the positive and negative attracts. They move through the solution, reach the key and get deposited there and eventually the whole key is deposited with copper. Now you might be wondering the copper sulfate solution just lost some of its copper ions. So what's the role of this copper rod that we connected to the positive terminal? Well that copper rod slowly releases copper atom into the solution as copper ions. So while some copper ions are getting deposited onto the ion key, new copper ions are continuously entering the solution from the copper rod. That's why the concentration of the solution stays the same even as the plating continues. So technically, copper from the solution is getting deposited into the ion key, while the elect copper electrode keeps replenishing the solution with fresh copper ions. This whole process is what we call electroplating. In electroplating, the metal coating happens at the negative electrode and metal source, in this case copper, dissolves into the solution is at the positive uh, terminal. Here is an interesting fact, the speed of electro plating or how fast this coating happens depends on the strength of the electric current. A stronger current means faster plating. Similarly, the concentration of electrolyte also affects how quickly the coating forms. Now let's look at some of the common electroplated metals. Chromium for example has a shiny appearance and doesn't corrode. It just gets scratched. That's why it's a very common metal used for electroplating. But chromium is also quite expensive, so it's not economical to make an entire object out of it. Instead, objects are made from cheaper metal and then coated with chromium for that shiny protective layer. Similarly, jewelry makers often electroplate gold or silver on less expensive metals. So the ornaments look like they're made of gold or silver, but they're actually not. Tin cans that we use for storing food and uh, soda, Pepsi, cola, etc. Another great example here. 
they are made of electroplating tin onto iron iron alone can be used because it's very reactive but once you coat it with tin the food doesn't come into contact with the iron and stays safe from getting spoiled so that's how electroplating is used in real life however electroplating factories can cause pollution if they don't handle waste properly the used electrolyte that's the solution is a major environmental concern it's a polluting waste and must be disposed of carefully there are specific disposal guide guidelines to protect the environment and they must be followed strictly so what did we learn today electroplating uses electricity to coat one metal with another next time you see something shiny a watch a bike handle or even a soda can take a second to think is it really made of that metal or is it just electroplated